this way, the other group overreacts and goes way over here, and everybody leaves the middle of ground. And what's the middle ground? We're all sinners. We need Jesus. None of us are perfect. We have to live by this word that God has given us because Jesus is that word made flesh. We want to compare everything to the truth of the word of God. But the crisis in this generation is a new one now. I know the word of God in depth. Here it is. I may become a Pharisee, so I don't want to be a Bible scholar. I don't want to be a Bible student because if I know the God, word of God that well, I may become self-righteous as a result. So I want to feel my way through my Christian life and experience. I want to be more about doing than knowing. Have Christians been failing to do? The answer is yes. Is it because they know so much? No, it's because they're ignoring what they know. We need to know everything we can from the Word of God and do it. Isn't that what Jesus has said? Those who hear and act. Hear and act. And so this is the balance that we're trying to see. Uh, as you talk about this being better off to know just a little, to do, you know, that sort of thing. I, I couldn't help. Uh, a Toby Mac song came to mind. And if you look at the lyrics, the song is not totally hopeless. But it reflects this kingdom attitude at this time. I feel it in my heart. I feel it in my soul. That's how I know. Okay. Now, if you look at the lyrics, he says, now there, there's thousands of reasons why what I know to be true is true. He acknowledges that. But he waves the flag of this whole generation to say, I feel it in my heart. I feel it in my soul. That's how I know. Okay. What if you don't feel it? If you don't feel it today, is it gone? You see, if you know what the Word of God promises, and you have responded to the promise of the Word of God, that it is the promise of God God is faithful to keep His promises whether you feel it or not. Amen. And so, by the way, I want to tell you, this, this heresy that we're dealing with today is the one just before where we come back and we scream and we spit and we're talking about bacon getting in your eyes and stuff because what they were trying to do back then was to cause a congregation of people to feel fear. Now, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And yes, there's a certain sense of understanding that we need to understand the reality of, the, of hell and all those kinds of things. But folks, Jesus is not trying to create terror in us. What he's trying to help us to see is that we are all sinners. We have all failed. And none of us will ever be good enough to make it. And so as Revelation 3 goes on, verse 18, Jesus says, I advise you, buy from me gold. That's not a feeling. This is a reference to the things that are eternal. When we go through the judgment seat of Christ, hay, wood, and stubble from things that we did in the flesh, gold, silver, precious stones, the things that we did in the spirit. The, the scripture says that uh, the gold and silver, the precious stones, those are the works that survive from. Those will be made a crown that you will have, not for your own adornment, but to lay before the one who deserves it, Jesus. That's a day in heaven you need to put on your list. It's coming. It could be sooner than we think. And so he tells them, look, Laodicea and church, you guys, you may think you've got it all, but you've got nothing. You're blind. Naked. He describes them as lost, basically. Spiritually, he describes them as being lost. 
And so he says, here, buy from me so that you can have the things that you need. These are all <coughs> referring to spiritual concerns and statements. To be clothed in righteousness, right? To be able to go from being blind to be able to see. All of these things are, are understandable. And then he says, look, for those whom I love, <coughs> I reprove and discipline, therefore be zealous and repent. So still, the call is repentance. This is not the popular message in the church today. But the Beatitudes start with, I. I'm dead. I'm an alcoholic. I'm a sinner. And I've got nothing to present to God from my own. That is our starting place. Notice, if you would, it goes on in verse 20. And by the way, how many times have we used this verse to try to bring someone faith in Christ to pray to receive Christ? And, and I mean, it does reflect something that is, could be individualized. But Jesus is speaking to a church. Can you imagine this? We're sitting in church one day and all of a sudden we hear. What is it? And all of a sudden you hear, you know, Charlton Heston voice coming from out there somewhere. Right? <laughs> Behold. I can't do Charlton Heston even with a sinus infection, right? I stand at the door and knock. He's talking to the church. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and be with me. Here's the church, the Laodicean church, and where's Jesus? He's outside trying to get in. And that can be true of Little Cypress Baptist Church as well. Whenever we have our focus on what our desires are, what we think should happen, or whether or not we're comfortable, or whether somebody else ought to be doing this or that, as opposed to trying to find out from God, God, what am I supposed to be doing with the spiritual giftedness that you placed in my life? Once you brought me from being a sinner, totally with nothing to offer, and you saved me by me putting my faith and trust in you alone for salvation, and you put your spirit within me, and now you've gifted me to minister within the body of Christ and to have a mission to share the gospel around the world, and you've given me opportunity to fellowship with other believers in the local church and to be discipled and grow in my faith. To worship the Lord openly and freely, not only in corporate worship, but on my own and individually. You've done all that for me. Now, Lord, what are you saying that we need to do? And what do we need to do? And Jesus says it one more time. Here. Act. He says it to me. He says it to you. Be in the Word. Hear what the Word is saying. How the Spirit is at work in your life. Take action to be obedient. You say, well... How were those people supposed to buy salvation from Jesus? <laughs> How were they supposed to do that? Isaiah 55, 1 and 2. Remember, this is all the word of God. I love the way this starts off. <laughs> Ho! You know, like, get some attention, right? What would you yell right now to get somebody's attention? Ah, yeah, that's good, right? Ho! Everyone who thirsts, <coughs> come to the waters. <coughs> you who have no money, come, buy, eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money, without cost. <coughs> Why do you spend money for that which is not bread? The things of the flesh, the things of the world, the things of the enemy, 
Why do we live our lives? Why do we spend our lives for those things? Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread? And your wages for what does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me. And eat what is good. Delight yourselves in abundance. <coughs> Excuse me. Verse 3. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen that you may live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you. According to the faithful mercy shown today. I will make an everlasting covenant with you. What did Matthew 5, 3 say? Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Oh, an everlasting covenant. An everlasting promise that God will never fail to keep. Those who come to him acknowledging their those are the ones he's looking for. Those are the ones he can save. Those are the ones that he can bring into his kingdom. But until we can come to the place where we can save. My name is Dave. And I'm a sinner. And I need will never make it into his kingdom. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for there is the kingdom of God. So is grace found in the Gospels? The kingdom, the kingdom of God, is a precious gift to those who sense their own poverty of spirit and come to the Father through his Son, Jesus, the Messiah. Will you do that today? Are you ready to just acknowledge that there's no way you're ever going to be good enough? And if you're thinking that you are good enough, you need to ask God to show you why you're not. Is this letting Him visit with you in your spirit right now? You know, He's not going to compare you to the best person you know. He's going to stand you up beside His Son, Jesus, and compare you to Him. And unless you match Jesus, you're not good. So the only way for you to make it is for the righteousness that is Jesus to be applied to your life and experience by you acknowledging your need and asking Jesus to say, make you a child of God. And then the things that he's going to teach us in the Beatitudes over the next while, those are things that we're not just going to hear. But we're going to listen and act. Father, we do ask that you would forgive us for the many, probably millions of times that we've listened and not acted. For the foolishness that is so much of our experience, we wonder why we go through struggles and spiritual uh, problems and physical issues. And we should know that it's because we've listened and not taken action. So we pray, Lord, that you would help us to get past ourselves. We would get to the bottom of our spiritual understanding of who we can be without you and suddenly look up to you and say yes Jesus today I know that I'm not perfect and you are and if you're the measure of what makes heaven I don't make it so because you are graciously offering me forgiveness for my sin great as it is. Even my pride to think that I might have been good enough. For Jesus, I humble myself before you and I acknowledge that without you, I can never make it. And 
make it to heaven. I can't live this life the way that you've intended. Lord Jesus, please save me. I believe in you. I trust in you. I believe that you live a sinless life. That you, Lord God, sent Jesus to come and show us how to live. Lord Jesus, that you did that perfectly. And you took our sin on the cross. You rose from the dead and showed you had victory over sin and death. Lord, help us to trust you today. Yes, Jesus, save me. I receive. Lord, for those of us who have belonged to you for some time, and we have grown maybe a little spiritually prideful and forgotten what it was like the day that we realized just what it meant to be a sinner who could never save themselves. Lord, help us to remember that from time to time, not so that we will feel bad, but so that we will understand that we are blessed to be a part of the kingdom of heaven because of you. Help us to not only hear what you say in your word, but to take action. You're calling us to be a part of this church family. If you're calling us to take a role in teaching the Bible with children or in a discipleship group, if you're calling us, Lord God, to, to find a, a place to serve in the church, we would say yes to you and then we would take action to find out how to get involved in the way that you're calling us to. We thank you for that. We pray these things in Jesus' name. To have a kind of invitation. Not very popular in churches anymore. A lot of churches don't do it at all.